From the group of structures below, we have to choose the one that matches the infrared spectrum the best. And the best way to solve this question is by process of elimination. Let's look at choice A here. We, of course, have the hydroxyl group, the OH bond. If we drew that out, we can actually show the actual bond itself like that. And we probably have learned in this chapter that the OH bond itself has an infrared frequency of around 3200 to 3600. 3200 to 3600. If we look at the infrared spectrum, it doesn't appear that we have any signal in that range. It's sort of just white space over here. So it's very unlikely that the correct answer will contain an OH group. This can help us rule out choice A. Next, we might look at choice D. Now, choice D has a very characteristic bond here. It's the carbonyl bond between carbon and oxygen. It's a double bond, and basically that signal would appear at around 1710. And if we look at the graph here, we don't really have a signal very prominently, at least at 1710. There's a little blip right here, but usually a carbonyl infrared frequency stretch is much more intense than that little blip would suggest. So this is probably incorrect as well. We can next move on to the alkyne. It has a triple bond between two carbons, and that typically has a value around 2200. And we go and we look at 2200, and there just is nothing going on in that range, so it's probably not the alkyne either. Why don't we next look at the carbon-carbon double bond? And the value for that can vary depending on whether it's a trans double bond or a cis double bond, but in this case we have a, a trans double bond, excuse me, and we can approximate that signal at around 1660. And if we look at the graph, once again, we have a couple little blips up here, but none of them are intense enough to warrant us in selecting this as the correct answer. Now we have a basic alkane and then a similar looking ether. The ether has a bond, of course, between carbon and oxygen. And that bond is rarely useful in distinguishing molecules, but in this case, it actually will be useful because that bond typically absorbs in the range of around 1050 to 1200. This is known as the fingerprint region, or it's located in the fingerprint region. And if we look, we actually do have some action there. We have a signal right here that looks like it is certainly within the range of 1050 to 1200. So because of that signal in the fingerprint region, we actually have some evidence that the ether would be the correct answer. The alkane would lack that signal. So it's probably not the alkane. And because we do have that signal in the range of 1050 to 1200, the ether is going to be the correct answer. So in this case, it's going to be choice B.